Justice Talakawa consolidations in the Okay, we have Rajan Matthews with us. Uh, Rajan, I'm still going through the fine print. Uh, I'll just get to reading out the details, but very quick reaction from you. Um, so very clearly, what was uh, expected in the industry vis-a-vis -vis increasing consolidation as a result of increasing financial pressures on uh, companies, uh, higher costs of spectrum, uh, higher costs of implementing networks. So all of this means that only... Uh, well skilled companies will be able to raise the required resources. So clearly this was something that we had uh, said would happen and it is happening. So clearly uh, well within what is expected. Rajan, I'd request you to hang in on the phone line. We also have Sanjay Kapoor. Uh, but let me also read out some very crucial contours of the deal. Um, Arcom and Maxis Communication, which is essentially SL, will be combined into an entity which will be called Merge Co. So that's the name of the joint venture. 50% uh, will be held by Arcom and by Maxis Communications. Again, that's where they refer to SL when they say that. The transaction will reduce Arcom's debt by 20,000 crore rupees or over 40% of total debt. And SL's debt will uh, come down by 4,000 crore rupees once it closes. The deal will be closed by 2017. Now, SL has reaffirmed its commitment to India after already investing about 35,000 crore rupees. Then they go on to outline what this means. So essentially, this is the second largest spectrum portfolio amongst all operators in India across 950, 800, 1800 and 2100 megahertz band. They will, of course, as we have been saying since morning, they'll have presence across 2G, 3G and 4G. The combined entity will enjoy enhanced business continuity through extended validity of spectrum till 2033 and 35 uh, and uh, yes uh, the com the combined capex and operational synergies are expected to be at 20000 crore rupees the overall assets uh, for the merged entity that is uh, Majetco will have uh, they'll have assets of about 65000 crore rupees and bang in line with what we had said net worth of 35000 crore rupees uh, uh, before i bring in the remind of the conversation sanjay very quick reaction from you uh, in line with what you had expected yeah look uh, you know the structure of the industry has already been defined uh, this will be an oligopoly i think the days of perfect competition in this industry are over and it was very natural for allies to come together and see what uh, they can do to create mergers uh, and bring in a size which can be competitive in the market. While I say that, uh, there are still uh, a lot of players in the market, at least five or six uh, you know, serious players who seem to be alive. And this number will further get consolidated is, is my own take because uh, no matter how big the Indian market is, room for five, six, seven players is difficult because the world over there are a couple of players who make money then there are a couple of players who strive to make money and and the game is really uh three four five players and no more so i think i guess in india to have more than four or five players will be tough and keeping them uh sustainably profitable uh, is going to be a challenge however i think the move is in the right direction leading towards consolidation and leading towards that oligopoly structure uh, so i hope at the end of the day uh, there is enough capital committed in this company to make it profitable and it is transformational in nature because the war in future is going to be fought not on voice but data and to do a data transformation in this industry you need tons and tons of money i don't know whether you picked up even china is now facing a spectrum crunch with all the spectrum that's available in that country right so i think india is going to go through that if you think uh, you know, bidding for 20 megs or 25 megs of spectrum right. or 15 megs of spectrum is going to be enough in the long run. It's not going to be. This is going to be a war with deep-pocketed people in future. And I hope that we find the winners and also runs in this market sooner than later. Okay, Sanjay, stay on. Uh, we take your point that consolidation is positive for the industry. There is going to be more consolidation. And let's hope the merged entity does have the deep pockets needed to play this game. But Nitin Sony of Fitch Ratings also joins us on the show now. Uh, Nitin, they go on to say that the transaction will reduce Reliance Communications debt by 40% or by 20,000 crore rupees. Does it change your rating on Reliance Communication? And if yes, how so? <coughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, we have a rating of double B minus with a stable outlook on Reliance Communication. So as um, as this transaction goes through, I think it will be neutral to 
credit negative for Reliance Communication, given that about uh, Arcom's net debt is $6.1 billion, so about $2.5, $2.7 billion goes away. But the EBITDA will also go away from the Arcom entity. And Arcom, after the tower sale transaction, will be left with their uh, undersea cable business for, and, and the enterprise and the optical fiber business. So depending on the valuation of towers, we would see that entity as a slightly weaker entity from the, the present uh, combination of uh, businesses that it has. And, uh, you know, it, on the valuation of towers and the transaction, I think, uh, you know, that uh, really Nitin, action is on that. Okay, uh, Nitin, can you help us with some numbers? We know Reliance Communications, uh, you know, figures as of F516. Revenues of what, 22,000 crore rupees, debt of 7,500, 8,000 crore rupees. What percentage of it would be, uh, what would be the mobile wireless revenues and how would the combined, what would the combined entity's revenues as well as EBITDA look like? So I think ARCOM, uh, EBITDA of $1.1 billion and $6 billion of net debt, I think about 40% of its EBITDA comes from the wireless segment. So basically, they are uh, emerging 40% of EBITDA as well as the debt in the new entity. The new entity will have something like 12 to 13% market share, um, uh, an EBITDA of um, somewhere around $800 million, and a debt of uh, you know upwards of two billion uh, two billion dollars. So that an entity will not own any tower assets. So they will have to lease tower from the independent tower companies and from Reliance and Sutton, which so, uh, will be eventually sold off. So um, you know that the debt as a combination of the lease adjusted we lease adjustment we do because the company doesn't own its towers anymore will be higher than than two billion dollars.